Hello! And welcome back to my channel. My name, as always, is Bloodstained Wings, and today I hope you will forgive me and indulge in some really, really crazy, creepy, weird things. This, I know, is a painting of a winged tree. Um, so it's a tree that instead of having leaves has wings and feathers um, and it has a lot of coloration inspired by um, some very specific artists. I'm, I try to pronounce one of them in the video. I'm just not going to attempt that again here. What I'm going to say is I'm going to put their art links and names and stuff in the description. Uh, there's some amazing, uh, like I'm going to say European artists um, who have like amazing colors and they're really like fantastical artists that do like some sci-fi stuff and some like high fantasy stuff but it's all like super creepy and really atmospheric and I was just really inspired by their like colors and their interpretations of things. Um, now mind you their stuff is a lot more specific like they'll have like a specific green reaper or like a person that turns into just the veins or things like that. Um, Mine is much more uh, specifically just this tree idea that I had um, about how trees are very angelic. They do all kinds of things for us and ask for basically nothing in return, which is super nice and super awesome. I love trees. I hope you guys love trees. And I hope you guys love this weird, weird experiment um, that I just wanted to do. Um, and I hope that it comes across the way I want it to. Here we go. We got the goop. We got the goop, we got the goop, we got the goop. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why? I don't have an answer. Um, but um, we're going to start with goop. We're going to cover our whole canvas with the goop. Um, you can see that I did do a pre-gesso painting of this idea. This was a very weird idea. I talked about it in the intro. Um, but essentially, I'll talk about it some more for you. Um, I had a bunch of ideas because I was looking at a bunch of weird art. Um, and I like the idea that trees are angels. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever done this art before. I didn't really look into that. Um, but I did have like a bunch of references for like kind of color studies that I wanted. Um, Mariusz Lewandowski. I super said that wrong. They have a lot of colors that are very like inspirational in the way that they do. Um, like dramatic lighting and things. Now they have all kinds of different art where they do all kinds of different things and mine's not going to be that specific. Um, like I think they have one that's like, I don't know, like an angel with the veins and stuff and it's really cool looking. Um, and then they have like stone pillar ones where like the pillar is like a different color and there's like a it's cool sky happening in there. Um, mine's not going to be anything like that in terms of its detail and like overall spookiness um, because I'm not going to go that like hardcore into the details but what I want to try to do is have that kind of same creepy atmosphere to like you know creepy creepy um, so that's my plan is is creepy creepy I, I want to go full creepy we want to just embrace the creepy sometimes um, and that's the plan with this one so I have a pre-drawn sketch of my creature mashup that I came up with on my own, which was uh, a tree that instead of leaves and branches has wings. Um, and that's what this is. Um, I'm gonna make sure this is like white with like a little bit of blue highlights. That's my plan in my head. But the rest of it, I want to be like yellow ochre and like maybe a little bit of orange um, and a little bit of green. Like I want it to be like really dramatic colors. Um, so I'm gonna start by grabbing my yellow ochre. Now I did cover the whole canvas in a little bit of titanium white with some goop in it, so it shouldn't be like super dark, but hopefully this uh, makes it more, I don't know, brilliantly colored. Um, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna start with the yellow ochre as one does. I'm gonna blend this out. Now it doesn't matter too much if I get it on the wings because the wings are gonna be white with blue, so it doesn't particularly matter. I don't have to avoid it that much, um, but I'm going to try to avoid it anyways, because I don't want green to happen, but that's okay. I'm going to blend this out. This looks like absolute garbage right now. It's perfect. It's exactly what I want. Just pure garbage to exist. So you know we're doing it well when you start off with pure garbage. We're going to blend it out. 
There we go. Get this all the way up there. We needed to start with yellow ochre is basically what I'm trying to say. But now we need to blend the heck out of it. So that's what I'm gonna do with this bigger brush. It's really hard to blend with smaller brushes um, on such like a larger canvas size. Um, it's just much easier to just use a larger brush. So just use a larger brush. Do it. Why hurt your wrists when you don't have to, right? So yeah, you can see I'm basically blending the whole thing out. So it has like a very, it's not perfectly even toned, um, but it's more even toned than it would have been if I didn't blend it out. Oils are great for blending things out, just as a matter of statement. If you're ever painting with acrylics and wondering why things don't work this way, it's because you're not using oils. Use oils. I'm, I'm a big fan of oil paintings. Um, and oil is a meeting, has a meeting, as a medium is what I'm trying to say. There we go. Um, I wish it was more environmentally friendly. And I have heard of um, these fancy kind of, uh, I need to paint and talk at the same time. <laughs> but I have heard of water-based oils. That's what I'm trying to say. Water-based oils. I have heard of these. I have not yet tried these, but I have heard of them and heard that they are pretty wonderful things. Um, so I don't know if I'll ever get my hand on some so that I can uh, make an attempt at doing a painting with them. Um, I have experimented with uh, gouache, which is loads of fun. Um, and I really enjoyed playing with gouache. Um, I say that as if, it's, as if I stopped playing with it. No, I'm still playing with it, just not on the YouTube. I'm playing with it on stream. So if you guys want to join me and make me paint things in gesso, please feel free to join my Twitch stream. That's where some things happen sometimes. That's twitch.tv slash bloodstained wings. Um, yeah, cross-platform promotions. How'd you like that? You probably didn't, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, all right, that looks better. I've got like a lot of variations going on and I like that, but there's smooth transitions, which is what we're looking for. My tape is also coming up, which sucks, but that's okay. We'll work with it. We're working with you, tape. But yeah, I like how like it's a little bit darker here and a little bit darker here and there's like this light spot. That's pretty cool. We're gonna work with that. We're gonna work with everything that magically happens in this painting. Um, okay, I'm gonna grab some of the Viridian Hue. And we're about to make giant mistakes, so I hope you're ready for me. Um, and if, if this is your bravery test, then here we go. I'm gonna actually... You may have noticed a change in tape. Um, that's a thing that I just did. I, I'm gonna be working on this side a lot right now, and I just needed the tape to just be there. Um, so that's what I did. So I want this to have like a like green weirdness to the sky. Um, and then I'm going to have like a light spot over here that's like really dramatic. I want this part to be light and this part to be dark, but I don't want it to be like a color that like makes sense. I want it to be this like weird unsettling green, which makes it like really creepy. And that's what I'm going for is this creep factor. I talked about it earlier. Oh, geez, I hit the camera. I'm so sorry. There you are. Welcome back. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> But yeah, I want it to be like really like unsettling and creepy and green um, and just like thrown in this like weird green color to the sky. I might add like a little bit of Prussian blue to it and a little bit of black to it as well. But for now, I'm just going to try to work with the green and make the green happen and make the green make sense is my plan. I wanted to just have this like weird darkness up in the corner. Yeah. It kind of like plays with the like sky a little bit. That's what I want it to do. Just like play and like be weird and funky. Going for a weird and funky. Oh, that's looking good. Okay. It's, it's already looking a little weird. I'm going to grab a little bit of the black and the blue. I'm going to use the same brush. I think I'm done with the green. I think so. Okay. I'm going to go into the little bit of blue, a little bit of black, just like the smidgiest smidgen of these. So I just want it to be like a kind of gray and I'm just going to try to like 
mood this up with a little bit. This is Prussian blue. This is a very, very dark blue that I'm working with. Um, I don't want to use this brush because then I won't be able to do anything else. So I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to blend it outwards. Never mind the background noise of my cat. That, that's fine. See how like that just brought like a whole world of darkness to that? That's what I was looking for. Just like a lot of like weird, dark moodiness. But I'm looking for that in this painting. If you don't want that in your painting, please feel free to do something else. Um, but I'm going for like mood. Yeah, maybe just like a little bit. Kind of like poking out over here. Play with the concept of that being maybe a cloud. I'm just gonna clean my brush a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean just like rub it off on the paper towel. And then I come back and blend that. So that it just kind of, yeah. Masterfully blends with the rest of it. It just adds this like real creep factor and I'm, I'm really here for it. I think what I'm gonna try to do is actually highlight some of this in here with some yellow, maybe not. Maybe I should leave it. I don't know. Maybe I like it. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's do some like fluffy clouds. Maybe that will help to like, if I just broke it up with some clouds and then I can um, blend those out and stuff. And then I'll have like a light column through here. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's do, let's do some clouds. Do some like weird, happy clouds. Hoping for them to be like real in there kind of thing. Just existing. All right. Yeah. All right. So let's blend that out with a different blending brush. And we're going to blend out the bottom. So we're making clouds the same way we always make clouds in which we blend out the bottom until it disappears. And then you fluff the top real gentle like like that so we blend out the bottom and then fluff up the top really really gently there we go oh ho oh. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes you have to sit, like, take a look back from your painting in order to, like, see everything. But yeah, that's, that's what I wanted. Just gonna add another one. Right here. To kind of, like, place this as, like, a shadow. Kind of what I'm going for. Get some spooshes up here. There we go. Got a lot of paint that's in like the back corner of my brush there that I had to push out. Just gonna fluff those together. Make this nice and floofy through here and fluff up the top and then bend out the bottoms. Fluff up the top, blend out the bottoms. This is, this is the whole plan, that's how you do. It's the same thing, like every time. There we go. Oh, that is exactly what I wanted to do. Really creepy, floating, angled clouds. I'm feeling this. It's got that like creep factor, even though it's like very like kind of angelic, but it's like creepy angelic. Like Neon Genesis of Angelon or Razaphon for all my anime fans out there. Hi, anime fans, um, all three of you. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna try to get those columns of light that I was talking about, and I'm gonna do it with a palette knife because that's my favorite. Um, so we're going to get the roll of paint on the end of the knife there. See that roll of paint? Roll of paint, that's what you want. I'm just gonna come in, actually first I'm gonna make, no, I do put, yeah, no, I'm just gonna go for it and I'll put some clouds on top of it to blend it all out. So I want this to come in like this, and I want it to be like, boosh. 
Oh yeah. Like so. I wanted to kind of like, I don't know, fade into the tree. This is our like source of light. So I want it to be like very direct and very present. And then we only have like a little bit of them coming down here because only some of it filters through the tree is the idea here. There, just like the smidgiest bit. I'm gonna try to see if I can blend that with the brush that I use to blend the rest of it. I'm gonna start down here and just kind of follow the light angles that I have just to kind of soften it up. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just pulling it just very gently. I'm being exceptionally gentle right now. Just, just so you guys know, very, very gently. I'm not pushing. I am very gently, very gently, just like touching and pulling. And that's it. I want a little bit more right there. So I'm just going to grab a little bit. Just kind of angle it right in there. There we go. And blend. Very gently. There we go. Okay. So we have now our source of light, beautifully, beautifully illustrated. And now we're gonna paint some clouds on top of, just up here to kind of like get rid of those like direct lines that are happening. Cause I don't want them to be like super direct like that. So I'm just gonna very gently blend that away so that it ends up being all part of the same thing. Take the excess paint off of my brush and just kind of floof these clouds together so they all kind of feel like they're part of one cloud. Part of one cloud. <laughs> wow, I am really loving this. I think this is really, really cool and really, really weird. So thank you for being here and being a part of this. Uh, it's about to get weirder. Um, so, you know, please feel free to be ready yourself for that. Because what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to paint the white in this part. So this whole thing is going to be white. Yeah. With blue. And I'm going to use my paint thinner to get my paint super thin. Actually, I'm not going to use this brush. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Yes. So this might take me a while, but I want to take my time with it and I want it to look good. So please forgive me if this video ends up being 45 minutes long. I mean, you can skip forward to the end. That's no big deal. I can't. I have to sit here and do it. So please enjoy on my behalf. <laughs> and then I'm going to add some blue to like add some shading. It's going to look all like cool. I think I've said that already, but I'm going to say it again, probably twice. Guarantee nothing in regards to me repeating myself. I think I repeat myself a lot on these videos, but I think it helps to tell you guys the same thing over and over again when you're doing paintings. Like for example, start with yellow. Sometimes you can never hear that enough because you end up forgetting and then you're like, damn it, if only I remembered to start with yellow. Um, pretty sure they told me that and I forgot. It happens and then you forget and then you're mad because you know your yellow is no longer pure yellow and that's what happens when you forget the lessons that you already learned you learn them again and that's okay 
But that's why I repeat myself a lot is because I feel like if you say it enough times, eventually it'll, you know, settle in. I still sew right sides to wrong sides when I'm sewing fabric. So really, I'm not sure that that really helps, but I'm going to keep telling myself that it does help so that at least I can pretend like I'm going to get better at it. <laughs> do you guys ever do things like that? Tell yourself things and then you're like, it, it's fine. If I just say it enough. <laughs> I hope so. I hope I'm not alone. I'm just laying in the like basic color of this being white to take away some of the yellows that were already in there. It's going to help to prevent it from turning green when we add the blue, which we will do momentarily. I'm just going to get more paint thinner because it has evaporated. Watch out. Yeah. I have to say, I had this idea of just like, I'm, I have an idea for like a tree, but with wings instead of leaves. And like, I want it to be creepy and cool, but mostly creepy. Um, and I don't think anybody's gonna really enjoy this or want to do it, but uh, I do. This is another one of those cases where I have an idea and um, I'm sorry, but I have to do it. Same with the uh, galaxy hair one. I really enjoyed that painting. I don't know if you guys enjoyed that painting or not, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and as of recording this video, it is still available for sale in my Etsy shop. And if you didn't know that I sell these in my Etsy shop, I sell these in my Etsy shop. Um, and you could feel free to buy one if you would like. Uh, but yeah, this, that one and this one are like the brainchild of the things that happen in my mind. Um, and so they're not necessarily like, oh, like a super normal and what everybody would clearly pick. They're like, wow, this is what your brain thought of? And I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it would look cool. <laughs> That is what we're doing. I know there's not a lot of sound when I'm doing this kind of technique for the paintbrushes. Get more paint thinner. There we go. I use odorless, odorless paint thinner, um, and I highly recommend using odorless paint thinner in a well-ventilated area because oil paints and turpentine and things like that, they can be very scary toxic. Um, so, you know, for the first time ever, I'm going to do a PSA about that and be very careful um, with this because you can get a headache, you can pass out, like it's, it's not exactly the best things for you. It's part of the reason why a lot of people like acrylics because you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff with acrylics but you do with oils. Um, and I'm not gonna argue against that. That is a valid reason to not like the oils. Oils also take a really long time to dry, where acrylics, like it's dry, like before you're finished painting it. Um, that's part of what I don't like about, oil, or about acrylics. They dry too fast. I can't blend. I can't blend enough with oils and that bothers me. Or with, uh, with acrylics, not with oils. Oils are perfect and we love oils. All right, so now I think, oh geez, I hit the camera again. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get comfortable. I shouldn't do that apparently. Don't get comfortable because we're about to mess it up anyways. All right, let's get more of the paint thinner situation. Let's get a little bit of this Prussian blue action. I'm using Prussian blue. Um, actually, I'm going to mix it with a little bit of black. Um, but I'm using Prussian blue because Prussian blue is like, I don't know, I'm going to say creepier than Thylo blue. Thylo blue is like very bright and happy, 
where Prussian blue is like dark and like creepy. I'm gonna start in here because this whole thing is gonna be dark in here. Ooh. Oh, immediate darkness. All right, I'm just gonna try very hard to blend this part out as much as possible to try to get it back to being a little bit white. It's not, but that's okay. All right, Let's see if we can get just a little bit. Nope, nope, we got a lot. So we're just gonna blend it out. I've got too much on my brush, I think is what's happening. So I'm just gonna try to get a little bit off my brush. There we go. So I'm adding blue shading around the feathers on the inside. I'm just blending that out. And that hopefully gives it that like dramatic shading look. I want it to be like dramatic lighting. Oh yeah, heck yeah. All right, good. Let's do it again. Put it over here. A little bit. Right, it's right there. Very gently blending that out. Excellent. And then we'll do some like harsh highlights on the other side with the white to like really make it pop. But I wanted to add these like shadow lines. And I wanted them to be blue because blue is like really cold, but also I feel like it adds a lot more dimension having another color through here. I also felt like it really helped pop, pull through the like blue green that's going on over here that have that like reflected in the tree kind of thing. Listen, I thought about this really hard and I want you to acknowledge that I thought about this really hard. <laughs> there we go. Trying to really blend that out. Just wanted to add a little more shading to these guys. Yes, yes. Things are coming together. Things are coming together. That's the idea is to just slowly add some like very fine definition and details. Look, this one's basically in shadow. I don't know why I had it not in shadow, but that's that's in shadow from like everything else that's going on. Same with these, they're mostly in shadow. There we go. There, oh, dramatic. That's what we're looking for. All right, I got a little bit more on my brush and it's probably too much, but let's see, nope, it's okay. Excellent. Blending out underneath here. Basically anywhere the lighting would be like hella dramatic. That's what I'm going for. And like the light is coming from this direction. So that's why I'm shading more on like this side of the tree than I am on that side of the tree. But like things like in here would get a little shading and back here would get a little shading. But like not a lot because that part is gonna be like heavily illuminated. By, by this part, so. But this part in here would be more shaded because it's behind everything. You kinda gotta think about that when you're doing these kind of paintings um, where there's like dramatic lighting. You have to think about where the lighting source is and like how light moves or is like unmoved unmoved you know what i mean right with the like shadows and how shadows and light play with each other 
And that's really what this is about is, is keeping in mind that the light is coming from this angle, so then the darkness would be coming from this angle. I threw my brush, it's fine. I'm really focused on thinking about where it's going to be shaded and where it's not going to be shaded. So I'm sorry if I'm not talking all that much in this video. <laughs> A lot of me being like, think, 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 think. I did do a little bit of shading like ahead of time, but like not overly. I wanted this to be more shaded by the blue than shaded by like some kind of black. So I, I wanted to, to really keep that shade in mind. Over here. Yeah, it's starting to really come together. If you could mash something with a tree in terms of creature mashup, what would you have mashed with it? Would you have done bird wings like I did? Or would you pick something else? And if something else, what? I'm just going to grab more of the dark color and like really try to push the values here a little bit. But yeah, if you could, what would you? Not saying you have to, but like, you know, just wondering. Because trees are magnificent creatures. Like trees give us oxygen. They uh, maintain soils and like soil moistures um, and like atmospheric moistures um, and they like make sure that we like, I don't know, can like stand on ground and stuff and they give us shade and stuff and like all they ask in return is that we breathe. That's it. They just want us to breathe. Just keep breathing, human. And we're like, yeah, I can breathe. I can do that. And they're like, great. That's all I need. Just need you to breathe. And like that's just a magnificent thing and it's just so beautiful that that to me in my opinion that trees are so majestic like that that they uh they do all those things just like naturally and it's just it's and and then on top of all that they're absolutely gorgeous like every tree is just magnificently beautiful. You ever like drive in like the passenger side and then like just see like the most gorgeous tree and you're like, whoa, look at that tree. Man, that field is blessed to have that tree in it. And like, I absolutely agree. And that's the thing that happens to me on a regular basis. There's a tree that's on the way to my mom's place. Um, and, uh, and we, they jokingly call it my tree because I freaking love it. It's a white pine um, and it's just standing in the middle of the field like dramatic against all odds being like, yes, I am here. And I just I really appreciate that about that tree. Um, not that anybody really overly cares about it because it's just a tree in the middle of the field. But like I appreciate its existence and I'm glad it exists. And then now my family is like, that's your tree. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I do, you know what? Yes, that is my tree. I'm taking ownership of this tree that belongs in somebody else's field. It's mine now. Too bad person who owns that field. That tree is mine. <laughs> Not allowed to take it down, ever. 
<laughs> really trying to, I've got like all the tiny brushes and I'm trying to just blend extremely gently on these tiny details here to kind of make this work. I'm really like basically drawing with brushes, um, which is why I'm using the smallest brushes that I have. Um, this is not the like Bob Ross style of painting at all. Bob Ross was all about like use the biggest brush possible and get this shit done. And like while I don't disagree that that is awesome, it doesn't work with everything. And this is an example of where it wouldn't necessarily work. You got to get a little more up close and personal with this guy. And that's fine. We're doing it. And in fact, I would argue that we are loving doing it this way because this is looking really good. I don't know, maybe it's not looking good. Maybe I'm being ridiculous. Maybe I'll hate this tomorrow. Who knows? But I've had this idea in my head for like a while, for a few days. And I was like, I need to paint this. But like, I also had to work. So. It kind of ruined all my plans to paint this. <laughs> but we got here eventually. Today was a bit of a rough day actually, but that's okay. We got through it in the end and that's the important part. And I actually do genuinely enjoy the job that I'm doing, so. Even when there's drama, it's still like, yeah, but it's a good job. You can see how close I'm getting because I think you guys can see my head. But if you can't, go me. If you can, I'm, I'm sorry. And this is just going to add some more, like, we're upping the, the contrast essentially. You want to have a lot of contrast when it comes to um, paintings because it helps them to feel more, um, I don't know, real, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Upping the contrast. Um, it helps. It helps a lot for, for paintings um, to make them like feel more 3D and more like rounded and things like that and like edgy, all that kind of stuff. Upping the contrast is definitely a good idea. Um, so if you're ever looking at your painting and you're like, oh, I don't know what's wrong with it, try upping the contrast. Um, you might not have had enough of it. Sometimes uh, the contrast is so much that it's just straight up black and white. Um, <laughs> and that can look very nice as well. But it also might not work out the greatest if you have like the wrong values in the wrong places. That's another argument entirely, but you know. This is coming together exactly the way I hoped. I sing a lot, um, just on my own to myself. And uh, on my stream, some people really encourage that. And so now it's gotten progressively worse how much I randomly sing. It's a thing I notice when I'm editing these videos. Hi, editing PSW. She's like, don't talk to me. <laughs> Just want to really like up the contrast on the like points of these. Blend, be blend. I really want those, like, the tip of these things to be, like, really... Yes. More drama, but also still blended. Yes! Much more contrast. Okay, that's excellent. I definitely wanted that to happen. So that's good. Do I have enough to be able to add a little bit through here? I do! Excellent. Punch down here, and I'm just gonna up the contrast on that guy as well. 
that out. Plan that. Excellent. Okay. No, this is this is looking good. This is exactly how I wanted this to look. Okay. I'm just going to clean this brush, which I was using for the most part. Make sure to really get that blue off of there. And then grab some more paint there and go into the white. And I'm going to try to add some like straight up white highlights that are like a little more thick, a little more painterly, a little less paint thinner. I don't know if that made sense, but I also don't know if this is going to work. Work. Yes. So this does require more of a steady hand to do this technique. Um, so I get it if this is very intimidating. Um, so, you know, don't, don't be intimidated. You can either try to do this because you're like, it's so cool, I want to do it. Just try. Again, worst thing that happens, you end up having a painting. Yay. <laughs> Wrong. How could you have a painting? Oh no. It's fine. Sometimes you may end up with a painting that you don't like. Also fine. It happens all the time, even to the best of us. Us, as if that includes me. No. There are lots of times where I paint paintings that I don't like them. And, you know, you move on with your life. You don't like it? Oh well. Move on. Um, I gotta blend this. So yeah, I'm just, again, I'm, I'm upping the contrast by adding more white. And once I get this to a place where I like it, then I can worry about the bottom of this place where I have been putting my hand, which is the reason I didn't paint it first. Because I was like, no, I'm going to put my hand there. Don't, uh, don't paint anything there. Got to be hand. That one's obviously going to be hella highlighted because the light is like literally right there. So, try and get this to be a little thicker. There we go. Highlight in here as well. Little bits. Little bits. There we go. Looking good. You can really only see like this highlight, but there are highlights on all of it. I promise. I am highlighting things. <laughs> you probably see it better in the uh, in the intro, um, but I, I'll try in this one to have like um, pictures at the end that. Um, really show the details. I feel like that's necessary for this one. Because this camera is good and stuff, but like it, it could be better. I don't really have the like 10 grand to spend on a new camera. You know what I mean? I'm sure you guys also don't have the 10 grand to spend on a new camera. And like that's what these cameras cost these days it's like 10 freaking grand so probably not gonna happen We're probably just gonna deal with this one for a while that blend out some of this a little bit blend out some of that a little bit There we go. Yep. We're just going to continue to do this for a little bit. I'm going to have like a nice sharp highlight. Back right there. There we go. All right. Almost done. Almost, uh, maybe almost done. 
I may come back and do highlights in this in a few moments anyways, but just want a little bit more on this one to really make it like right stand out. I want this arm to be like the most army of arms. Oh yeah, looking great. Look at all its majesty. <laughs> all right, um, okay, so now we can add texture to the tree, but I think I just wanna paint it blue. I think I just want that tree to have that blue that the rest of it does. So I think what I'm gonna do is clean my brush, clean, keep the paint thinner on it, Grab some more of that dark blue action that is like the black mixed with the blue. Thin it down so it's nice and thin. And we're gonna cover a lot of distance so it's okay if it's like real, real thin. Ooh, that's, that's nice and inky. I might try to add white on top of this to like add some like but with a palette knife. I might go grab my palette, my, my little palette knife to add some like, I don't know, I guess birch tree kind of texture to it. But I wanna start with the darkness so that it starts dark and ends up brighter. that creepy 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 dark color that's what I'm looking for when everything else is so bright this dark color is just so unsettling it's wonderful that's exactly what I was looking for just like super dark for absolutely no reason I'm like yes and then we can add the like model light to like the rest of it after we get this color down but first let's start by getting this color down there we go. It's nice and thin. Oh yes. All right. You know what I realized I forgot? This section in here between the tree limbs, right through here. Gotta have that be dark too. Go ahead and put that in, blend that out a bit. It's so dark. It's so very, very dark, but that's okay. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for it to be like hella dark. But I think I'm gonna come back and highlight that just a little bit more. Even though I'm gonna come back and do it with a palette knife, I'm gonna do it with the paintbrush a little bit first. Because I wanna make sure that this stays highlighted over here. I want that to be like highlighted so it really like pops. Same with this one here. I want that to very, very much pop up against the rest of it. Yes, okay, good. That's what I wanted that to do. And at least we have that a little bit. Okay, now we can come in with the palette knife. And I've got my tiny palette knife. Um, and I'm gonna grab some white. And I'm just gonna like pull straight down very, very gently to try to give it that like tree texture, a bark-like texture. I think I disagree with myself. <laughs> now that I've done one, I think I'm gonna pull that off a little bit. I think it's okay up here if I just scrape it a little bit. Yeah, that, that's fine. Um, but down here, I think what I'm gonna do is more of a swooping motion. I'm gonna try to mix it with a little bit of the darker color, kind of get them both mixed in together. 
So it's not so pure white, because it is in the shade here. So let's see. Just try to try things out. Worse than what happens, I don't like it. that look? Terrible? Excellent. Let's see if maybe I can blend it downwards and maybe that'll make it make more sense. So it'll give more texture. Hmm. I really don't like the fact that I went sideways with it. I thought that that would be the best after I did vertically there. I was like, maybe that's the best. It wasn't. We're gonna try to remove this. Let me just scrape it off with, with your palette knife. I'm gonna try again. Um, I'm just going to darken this again a little bit. just to kind of get rid of that like straight across look that it had for a little bit. I don't want that. Again. Okay, let's try that again. This time, we're gonna try going vertically down instead of going horizontally. That looks much better. Excellent. That's what I was hoping for. See, sometimes you just gotta try things. Just try it. If it doesn't work, try it again. That's okay. This is all like very shaded back here, so being very very delicate with my addition of color here there we go oh it's looking pretty stinking cute i like it okay so there's that now we have to decide what we want to do for this section here now i could do a red and have like red like bushes highlighted with the yellow and the orange or i could do the like green brown or green blue color that I currently have um I think I like the idea of the red because it would be crazy and different but I'm also scared of that mm. see if I could do this digitally it would be great so I could have the undo button I don't have an undo button there is no such undo button here so I think I'm gonna go green I think I'm gonna go green and I'm just gonna come in here and add the green and then I can add I just put like the tiniest bit and I'm like maybe I hate it I feel like the green makes too much sense so I'm hating it because it makes too much sense I think it needs to be the orange yellow orange kind of colors so this part here might turn green or it might turn brown rather it's already green but it might turn brown but that's okay um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my big brushes and I'm just going to have it look like bushes. I'm going to just straight up have bushes. Maybe I might do rocks as, maybe I should just do rocks. Just do a rocky landscape. Hmm. Well, let's put that knife, <laughs> that knife. Let's put that paintbrush down. Let's mix the yellow and the cadmium red together, maybe with a little bit of alizarin and crimson, just to, you know, get all the colors in here that I can possibly get. I really like alizarin and crimson. Um, it's always my color of choice when it comes to the reds, but mixing them all in the brush very like willy nilly that is my plan here. And we're going to see if this looks better. 
Oh yeah, I think that looks better. All right. Just gonna add some like rocks to this like barren landscape kind of situation. And then I'm gonna try to make it look like they have like some model light on it. They can have some like weird shaped rocks. Weird shaped rock. Yeah? What do we think about weird shaped rock? Cool. Scraping noises. Um, and then I think I'll just go like this. Grab that guy over there. And little guy right there. To kind of edit. Now this is the dark colors and we're going to come in with some other colors with some uh, of the lighter color to like lighten it up. Actually, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little crazy. I'm going to go into the Prussian blue mixed with the black. I'm going to add some like dark shading to the bottom. This is probably a bad idea. I'm just trying to get that like modeled look. Modeled? No, dappled. Dappled is the word I'm looking for. In case anybody was wondering what word I was supposed to be using, it was dappled. Dappled is the word I was trying to find that I couldn't find. That's, oh, this is already amazing. Oh yes, that's exactly what I was going for. Yes, now I can get some of the white and mix it with the yellow ochre, very roughly. So it's mostly white. There we go. I'm just gonna highlight this rock over here. Look at that. So it just looks like some light has like escaped and is touching it just just a smidgen, just a little bit. On like the littlest part, it's getting like a little bit of light, just on the edge. Yeah, so it doesn't like highlight the whole thing. And you can see there's like this there's shadow, but then there's also parts that are just not being lit up. That was my plan. I did it. I did it, you guys. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. I did not know if I could make this happen or not. Um, this is what I was going for. Crazy enough. Should I still have a bush or two? Maybe like one bush over here to be like, yeah, I'm a bush. And over here, just existing. And we'll highlight that as well. Um, I need more goop. I'm just going to go into that same mixture of the yellow and white. Fall straight down in one direction. Flip the brush over. And do that just a little kiss of highlights on the top there. That's all we need. Maybe just like a little bit on that guy too. So they exist now with their highlights and their low lights. And then we can take our palette knife. And scrape some like little little doodads into them. There we go. So now there's life outside of the uh, tree, but definitely still tree dominant. Oh my god, I am so pleased with this. This is such a random painting um, that is full of like weirdness and unsettling color combinations, um, and it just has this overall very like unsettling kind of vibe. I hope you guys are unsettled by this painting. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching me paint it because I certainly enjoyed painting it. This was so much fun. Um, please feel free to paint weird paintings on your own. I'm not sure I'm gonna put this one for sale because I like it. Uh, if it is for sale, it'll be in the notes below. If it's not, Sorry, I liked it too much. <laughs> I might bring this one into work, have it on my desk. Because it is weird. And I, I'm, I'm a weird person. And I like looking at other weird art. 
Um, and this definitely goes in the category of weird art. There is like no even attempt at depth on this. I just have the like very, very background and then the very, very foreground. Um, but you know, as one does, I will take a picture of this. So it will be beautiful at the end of this video. Thank you so, so, so much for indulging me in this crazy, crazy painting. I really appreciate that so much. Um, and I, I hope you guys know that you are loved and you deserve to be loved. And I will see you guys next week. Mwah!